Hello and welcome to the 21st video in this um, series Making Simple Plot with Robin for Android using Cocos 2DX. So what you're looking at now are a couple of new files that I've added to the project. One of them is called myjnihelper.cpp and one is called myjnihelper.h and I'll explain the where's and why's of those now, inside simple floppy Robin, though, first I've added those in those two files into the my JNI help. Uh, sorry, into the classes folder inside the project folder, which you remember is inside Cocos 2 uh, projects. Simple floppy Robin, in my case, whatever you've written it in your case. The other thing you need to do when this is added is inside the Android project folder, go into the JNI folder, open up the Android dot m uh, Android dot m K. I'm just checking whether I've got it open anywhere here. I thought I had, I have indeed. And you need to add a line here to, uh, to, to compile this with the project. Sorry, a little bit tired again and stuttering like crazy. Okay, so now that's added in, why have we got those files? Well, if we look at our project here that we've got, we haven't really talked about it much. Um, I'll just close up the library there. We've got our classes folder here with all the classes we've been using to program our application. And indeed, we can release the application probably already in its current state and everything's okay, working completely from the C++ code. However, up in the source folder here or SRC folder under our package is simple floppy robin.java and this is the entry point for the application. Um, I don't know how familiar you are with Android programming but usually in the um, when you're programming for Android each screen is based on what's called an activity and in the Cocos 2D LiX library in their source there's the Cocos 2DX activity here which you'll notice extends so inherits from the activity class and inside here is all the initialization done to set up the GL surface view um, for then drawing all the graphics that the Cocos 2DX framework does. So each activity has an on create, it has an on resume and on pause, things like that, um, all of which can be overridden and implemented in here just as you would with a normal Android application. And the reason I'm going through all this and pointing this out is you kind of have two layers. You have sort of on the top the Java, of which there's not very much at the moment, and then you have the main nuts and bolts of your application, which is the C++ side. But one problem can arise, and for example, when we implement the Google Gameplay services or the, the game services, we will want when the user scores a score to submit this score to the leaderboard online. And the API for that is obviously in Java for Android, which means we'll need a way of, from our C++ code, so from our Hello World scene, of calling a function in the Java here to then submit the score online. So we need some way of going between the um, C++ code and the Java code. And the opposite way around will also occur, for instance, where say the user has scored, I don't know, a thousand points has deleted the application and reinstalled, well, when they sign in, they'll see a high score of zero. Well, we'd like to be able to query the high score online and say, okay, is there a higher one online? If so, get it. Now, when we first start the application, there'll be a delay whilst this online check is performed. And when we get the score back, we might want to update the screen, so our hello world scene, and the high score label. So that means we'll need some way of calling a function in our C++ layer from our Java code. So the way we do this is by using something called the JNI, um, which is why the uh, files are called um, my JNI helper. And what JNI stands for is the Java native interface. And you have to simply think of it as a way of going between C++ and Java. OK, so enough explanation. The way it's done is there's actually some code, as with everything, because these guys are marvellous who've made Cocos 2DX, already fairly readily available. Inside Cocos 2DX, there's the Cocos Denson here, Android, JNI, and there are two files, Simple Audio Engine, um, JNI, CPP, 
and H. And the reason for these files is that the what this does is it calls various functions inside the Java side to start and stop music and things like that. Uh, I'll just find the files again because I've lost them, lost the window. So it's a good example of how to implement the JNI. Now we won't actually implement much of it in this uh, video, otherwise it will go on too long. But just to give a description of how it works, or a very basic description, I recommend you read up um, on online about this if you want to know any more detail. But we're provided with the code which we're going to be doing a little bit of copy and paste from. So inside the Simple Audio Engine CPP file, there's a Java method info structure. And the key thing is, this function here gets a pointer to the Java native interface uh, environment. So a pointer to the Java environment, basically. So a pointer to the Java. Then there's a function to find the class ID of the function we're looking for in the Java. And then there's another function which tries to get the information about a method in the class that we're looking for. This will become clear as we program this. We take as arguments there the method name and here this param code is a descriptive string describing the method we're looking for. And that's all you actually need. So if we look at something relatively simple like stop background music JNI, this is going to look for the method stop background music that's contained in the class um, org.cocos2dx.lib.cocos2dx helper. Um, and if in fact, if I go inside there, we should find somewhere in here, uh, was it play background music or so it was stop background music? And here is the function. So this is the function that's being called from that JNI. So that's what this class name then is for. So the way that works, if I just go back down to stop background music, is it creates a structure of method info and then calls the get static method info with this information, with the name, and crucially here with a description of the function you're looking for. Empty bracket says there are no arguments, and a V says the return type is void. A capital I, for example, would be a return type as integer. A capital Z would be a Boolean value. And the arguments if you put them in, again with the i, the z, or whatever, need to be separated by a semicolon. So a more complicated example is here is a function that's void again, so the return type is void, but it's taking in a string, as far as Java is concerned, and a boolean. So for a string you have to type this l java lang string, and then a semicolon, and the z represents the boolean value. Assuming then that the static method function return get static method info and note it's static methods it's looking for not non-static returns true then we call on the environment call static void method because it's a void method uh, with the information and then delete the reference and this here actually will then call that function inside the Java there if we're calling with some arguments like this example here then the arguments go on the end separated by a comma and that's all there actually is to it to call the function inside your Java code. So what we'll do inside our project is I'll just close these uh, files off here for now. Is we'll make a quick start on this, but we won't finish it. We'll go into that in the next video. In fact, actually, in fact, I'll stop there in this video and leave this like this because it's already be going nearly 10 minutes. And in the next video, then we'll actually start implementing the code because I've made a couple of changes to that code from Simple Audio Engine. Um, we'll implement that code then ourselves uh, inside this file here and then try and call a function inside our simple floppy robin. So that's it then for this video. It's not much coding, just a couple of files, more explanation, but I hope it made some sense and see you in the next video.